Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing something really fun. We're gonna build a machine that makes wooden rings. So my friend Andy Klein is another YouTube creator and we wanted to do a collaboration together. Now Andy's a super smart guy, very mechanically minded. In fact, he just came out with a super cool vise that I'll be showing on my channel in a couple weeks. Well, we wanted to do a collaboration and Andy suggested we build machines that make wooden rings, completely dedicated to uh, wooden rings. Without looking at each other's um, ideas, without talking to each other, we're both just gonna build a machine and see how they come out. So this is my version of it. It's kind of like a horizontal lathe milling machine. We're gonna build this, we're gonna make this ring, I'm gonna show you how I did it, and then when, you, when you're done watching this video, go check out Andy's video and see how he made his. So I had a pretty good idea about how I wanted to make this. I just didn't draw it up, no dimensions or anything. So I started by mounting the drill or figuring out how I was gonna mount the drill. And pretty straightforward. I use the Hitachi, this particular Hitachi, because it has a speed control on the trigger. You can also lock the trigger on in the on position, and it has uh, two places on each side of the drill to put bolts. So I built this frame that I could bolt the drill from both sides, and then if it still had a little movement, I could either use a wedge or a screw to keep it from moving around. So once I figured out how I was going to mount the drill, and I knew that was going to work, I needed to set up a way to move the Dremel tool, which I'm using as the cutting tool, um, in two different directions. So to do that, I'm just creating a, two slides, and they're both exactly the same to, as each other, so I'm just going to show you how I made the one. And I did that by creating like a dovetailed piece that will slide back and forth, and that'll make sense in a minute. I dated out a section on the bottom side of the dovetail piece for a bolt to um, slide through. And inside of that little groove, the bolt's going to ride. And then there'll be two pieces on each end that kind of capture the bolt. Now on the opposite side, I'm going to, or on the other side, I'm just going to use a nut that I'll chisel out an area f uh, for the nut to go. And that'll m uh, kind of capture the slide so it moves back and forth when I turn the bolt. With all the parts made for the slide, I needed a way to hold all those pieces together. So I just created a base that all the parts go on and then chiseled out the section where the bolt goes or the nut goes, excuse me. And then the nut's going to be just um, 2P10. I used some um, really thick 2P10 in there and then um, some hardener or some, it, it <laughs> the stuff that makes it dry really fast. So <laughs> once that was done, uh, I just glued the capture the pieces that capture the slide uh, and nailed them in place. Now being pretty careful here to make sure that that slide is pretty stiff. I don't want anything to kind of move around. So once that was in place, I put two pieces of half inch plywood on each end. And then over the head of the bolt, I put a piece of three quarter inch plywood with a cutout for the bolt head. Now that captures the, the bolt so it will move, um, it'll turn without moving back and forth. And that's pretty much it. Once I had that done, I put a plate on top of it or a mounting plate on top of it. And then I made a second one that goes on top of that. So now I have this thing that moves in two different directions. So on top of that, I mounted the Dremel tool, and then I mounted the drill on another slide, and then the drill itself pivots back and forth. And it'll make sense here in a minute why I did it that way. So to hold the ring blank in place, I just took a 3 8 bolt, drilled it through a piece of plywood, and put another one over the top of it. And that was how I was going to mount the ring. Now I needed to flatten it first before I mounted the ring blank and for the ring blank I used a piece of ebony and African ironwood and I'm just going to mount that with hot glue. Pretty simple. So 
So it works a lot like a um, like a mill does, like a lathe does, uh, except for I had the attachment at the end instead of on the side, or the cutter on the end instead of the side. Pretty straightforward build, and it worked really well. So I'm using a 1 8 end mill in the Dremel tool, which worked really good. First thing I did was flatten it out, and then I needed to figure out how big I wanted to make it. Now in this case, I'm just making a pinky ring, so I need to make the opening one and an eighth inches. That's how big my pinky is. Uh, so I just started by cutting something close, and then mic'd it out, and then went back and just set it till um, I got the right opening. Now once I had the right size opening, I just went back and forth and um, cut it all out. Now this actually went pretty quick, um, so I was surprised at how fast it went, and it worked really, really well. The top um, slide was a little bit loose, so I had to be a little bit careful about it. I'm going to have to go back and fix that, but other than that, this thing worked, performed amazing. And I accidentally bought a Dremel. I thought I was buying one with a cord, <laughs> but I ended up getting, I didn't look at the box. I just, I saw the one on top. I looked, grabbed the one below the, uh, the display and it happened to be a, uh, a cordless, but it, it made it through one ring at least. So that was okay, I guess. The battery made it through one ring. So once the inside was done, it was basically the same process for the outside. And again, it went pretty quickly. It's a lot of fun to watch, just these little bits of material being removed. Now I made the drill pivot so I could pivot the head and you'll see why. So I can actually attack it at an angle so I can round the outside and I can also contour the inside so it's a much more comfortable fit. So each one of these is at a slight angle, maybe three or four degrees and then I can come back and cut both the um, both the angles on the inside or get at least remove most of the material then I can come back and sand them by hand. So once most of the roughing was done I just came back with some sandpaper. Now <laughs> I don't have anything over 320 in my shop so I started with some 120 then some 240 and then went to some 320 and I left it on here I did as much milling as I possibly could while it was still on the head of the um, of the lathe, if you want to call it that, uh, and then I'll do the cutoff after I get as much possible milling as po done as possible. And again, I don't have any great finishes in the shop for this kind of stuff. I just have lacquers and conversion varnishes. So here I'm just spraying it with some lacquer. This is actually it looks wet here, but it's a satin lacquer, so when it dries, it doesn't have that gl that gloss to it. So once I've done as much milling as I was wanted to with it on there, I turned the drill completely sideways and then moved the uh, slide up into the position where I could cut use the Dremel tool to also cut it off. And of course, I forgot to press play when I did that and um, there's no going back. So, uh, but it worked really well. And when that was done, I just took another 3 8 bolt, put it in the drill, and then wrapped some tape around it to, it got thick enough to hold the ring, and did some more sanding. And some more finishing. And it turned out pretty cool. I like the way this worked. There's my machine. Now don't forget to go check out Andy's machine. Links in the description box below and see how he did his. I'm sure a lot of you have a lot more experience in making rings. Now, if you think there's things that we can do to improve this, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did. And of course, if you're not subscribed, go hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification next to the subscribe button so you get notified when my videos come up. You're not going to want to miss out on all the fun, crazy stuff we got coming down the pipe. Don't forget to check out any video, hit the thumb button, subscribe, watch these videos, and we'll talk to you guys later.
I'm like a fairy princess. Oh, 